Uh, Mr. Attorney General, thanks for, for being with us, first of all. Um, and I actually like to start with Amazon. Uh, a sure. superior court judge dismissed the complaint you had, and, and I believe I'm going to simplify it here, but you're arguing the fact that Amazon was telling uh, merchants, you got to give at least as good a price as Amazon as you are elsewhere. You argue that that caused prices to rise elsewhere, and therefore that was bad. Are, are you going to continue to pursue that line uh, after this dismissal? And, and why is it important, if so? Sure. Thanks a lot, John. It's always good to be with you. Um, in a word, yes, the District of Columbia is uh, preparing a motion uh, for reconsideration before the trial judge who dismissed our suit. Let me briefly tell you about it. You summarized it quite well. What Amazon does, both to first-party sellers and to third-party sellers, is that it mandates, after it builds in a good 30 to 40 percent commission on the price, that those sellers not sell their product anywhere else, including on their own websites, for anything lower than the Amazon commission-laden price. And if those sellers seek to do that, Amazon goes back and recoups the difference. What that does, John, is it artificially raises the floor for the prices. And so Amazon is able to mislead us into thinking that they are actually the cheapest provider of the product, when, of course, the only reason why they're so is because of that contract. They're using their market power to force people who want to get on that 70 percent electronic mall that Amazon controls to have everybody pay more for those goods and services. We think that's illegal. We think we'll be vindicated in court. OK, and, and to follow up on that, though, it sounds like they're and this is different from what they were accused of doing early on. You're saying that they're uh, giving merchants a big profit margin opportunity where if they can provide a better experience using Shopify or other direct-to-consumer uh, tactics, they can make a lot, mon uh, a lot of money, grow their business, grow their experience to be better than Amazon. It's, it's sort of a non-traditional uh, antitrust uh, argument, wouldn't you allow? I would agree with you uh, that now, of course, with these extraordinary companies, and I have a lot of respect for the the technology, the ingenuity of the companies, um, and traditional antitrust law may not have contemplated the ways in which market power can be utilized. But what we do know is that when market power is utilized to force uh, sellers to increase prices, that absolutely stifles innovation and creativity and results in you and me paying higher prices. I wonder what you make of the argument. Some, may, some argue that... Um Having uh, as much of a, a cash cow as, as AWS uh, subsidizing a consumer-facing retail business, in this case, does that fit any definition of antitrust? And if it does, what does it say about other companies that might have a very large subsidiary that provides a lot of cash and allows them to keep their pricing aggressive? Well, I think that this is a complicated area, to be sure. But what we've seen, John, to, uh, to be clear is that Amazon has engaged in these practices for over a decade. Let me take you back to Europe, where Europe uh, initiated an investigation on the same theory that the D.C. lawsuit is based on. Amazon finally stopped the practice in Europe uh, after about six years. So when Amazon knows that it's violating the law, knows that the investigations are catching up with it, it will change its practice. What we're doing here is seeking to have it change its practices so that sellers can be free to sell their products on any means at any price that they determine. That's the way it should work. 